Yeah, Steve Kirsch, I work for Token. So we provide open banking software that allows uh, companies to interface to banks using open banking, using the various open banking protocols. So we take what are dozens of protocols and we condense it into a single simple API that developers can use or banks can use to access other banks. So after the September deadline for PSD2, we're going to see more and more, get more and more banks uh, onto the platform. And there's also going to be changes. People are going to update these open banking protocols to enable them to do new things such as request for payment. And uh, you know, so as people add more and more things to their open APIs, then we'll make that accessible to developers. So it's just making the system more robust easier to use and, and so forth. My comment on the, the state of uh, the, the APIs is that we really don't have truly open APIs. You shouldn't have to go through a PISP and AISP to, to access your account. Right, human, as humans, we've had open APIs for you know, 20 years, right? We can all use what's called the World Wide Web, which is a a open API to your bank, but it's usable by human beings. And applications, my application sitting in my phone does not have the same abilities. Even if I grant it the abilities to access my account, um, it can't do it without my assistance every single time to make a payment, for example. And that is really cumbersome. So if you're a, if you're a business and you want to pay a bunch of vendors with open APIs, they're not allowed to do that. And so to me, that's a real misfeature. I mean, I think it would have been better, we would have been better off if the regulation was like two lines. Like, open it up to the same functionality as a human being would have and give it, allow an authorized app that, that the human being authorizes to do the same functions that a human can do in accessing their banking app. Because in fact, humans are much easier to fool than apps are, because they can be socially engineered, whereas apps cannot be. And so why not give people uh, real open access to their, their, uh, to their accounts? You know, so for example, with cryptocurrencies, each person has direct open access to their account and can, can um, initiate payments from an app without a human have to intervene. And that works securely for you know, a decade. Is that, uh, is the coverage. So we have thousands of banks in uh, uh, dozens of countries and we're going after getting 85 to 90% uh, coverage in the, the major regions, uh, including Eastern Europe. So throughout Europe, it's, it's basically the coverage, the ease of use from a programmer's perspective and, and what you can do with it, that you can initiate payments as well as uh, do um, uh, uh, look at uh, account information. So it's both sides of it, and we'll be adding uh, data analysis as well. Uh, so we have, uh, we're doing some work on the digital money side, and so that's worldwide. So we, it's work on doing, enabling us to solve all the problems with cross-border payments, the speed, the transparency, um, the, uh, the risk, and, and, and so forth. So um, we'll be able to do 24 by 7 instant settlement uh, cross-border, so you can move effectively central bank money on a weekend when the central bank is closed. So it allows you to actually get deposit credit in your bank account uh, within le le less than a second, cross-border. So that we'll be able to do cross-border and actually settle and put the money in your bank account faster than Visa can do just an authorization to authorize a payment. Uh, 
it's, it's networking, right? I, I, mean, I have not been uh, to any of the sessions here, not a single session. It's been uh, various meetings. And uh, so I talked to one of the top architects at a major multinational bank that will really propel our business. And I showed him what we were doing. He said, I'm not aware of that, but this is absolutely, uh, we are absolutely interested in this. And so he says, you know, I come to Money 20 for things like this that happen that I wouldn't be able to get from any of the sessions. So it's actually, it's a, it's a convening place where people can meet conveniently, but that you can also happen to have these um, situations where you're like at the dinner before that, I happen to be sat next to someone who worked for the US Treasury that I knew from five years ago, and she's actually in a position to help us. But those chance meetings wouldn't have happened without an event like this where you can sort of randomly bump into people that can propel your business forward in a big way.